We call a scene a dynamic range when there is a big excursion between the brightest and the darkest part of an image. It is one of the most difficult situations for photos and videos, and an area where drones traditionally struggle to compare to professional DSLR or mirrorless camera because of the much smaller sensor and the simple build of the lenses. With the Mavic 2, DJI has introduced a specific mode for HDR photos. This mode has been maintained and apparently improved in the Mavic Air 2. In this video, I will analyze how this HDR photo modes works in both models. And I will also compare it to other ways of shooting in this kind of situation, like automatic exposure bracketing. I've done plenty of videos about drone photography and also about these two models of drones. You will find a link at the end of this video and in the description below. If you're interested in drone, I would suggest to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. With drones, we often have images with a large portion of sky, as well as other elements on the ground. Since the sky is much brighter and it is paramount to avoid overexposing the highlights, we need to optimize the exposure for the sky. And very often the elements on the ground will be very dark, especially if we are in sunny conditions, towards the middle of the day, or shooting in the direction of the sun. New technologies have been added to both smartphones and prosumer drones in order to improve photo quality under these difficult conditions. The Mic 2 line has an automatic HDR mode, besides the automatic exposure bracketing, where several photos taken at different exposure need to be merged by the user using some software like Lightroom. The big problem with the HDR mode in the Mavic 2 is that the resulting file is a JPEG, so there is very limited room for editing. The Mavic Air 2 has a mode called Smart Photo that works in a similar way as HDR when a high dynamic range situation is detected. I have done a specific video about Hyperlight, the function the Mavic Air 2 utilizes when using Smart Photo in low light condition. I was impressed by the technology behind Hyperlight, so I have big expectations about Smart Photo for HDR situations. Also, a very exciting news is that there is now the possibility to have the resulting file in RAW, which makes things much more interesting. Note that with the HDR mode in both models, the exposure is automatic. Let's start with a typical situation in drone photography. A good portion of the image is taken by the sky. We are just a couple of minutes before sunrise. The sun is not out yet. There are some clouds in the sky. So the light is not very strong, and certainly it is not an extreme situation. But we are shooting in the direction of the sun, so it is still a relatively high dynamic range situation. This is a regular single raw photo non-edited, and as you can see the sky is correctly exposed and the highlight perfectly under control, but the shadows are very dark. Again, a very common situation with drone photography. Let's see now the same scene at the same moment, but this time taken in smart mode. The shutter remains locked for several seconds, as it is obviously taking several shots and merging them to HDR. The sky is just a bit more exposed than what I would normally do, but it's still ok. There is a bit more detail in the shadows, and we also notice that the white balance is much warmer. So out of the box, the smart photo is a bit better than the regular one, but in my opinion they cannot really be used as they are, and obviously need at least some basic editing. Let's see the two images after some basic editing. They both look good, but I would say that the smart photo has slightly the edge. There is just a bit more structure in the clouds, and certainly plenty of detail in the shadows, where the colors are rendered with really nice tones. 
So in this kind of very common situation for drone photos, smart photo is certainly the way to go for beginners and for people in a hurry to post their image in social medias. Although at least some basic editing is needed. For more experienced users, it could be a good idea to shoot a regular manually exposed image and right after a smart photo. First of all, in case something wrong happens with the first one, but also because in some situation, the smart photo can give better results. Let's move to an image where the dynamic range is a bit higher. The sun is around the edge of the image and is covered by heavy clouds. But from the unedited single photos, we can see that if we expose to avoid burning the highlights, we end up with very dark shadows. In the unedited smart photos, the sky is once again a bit too bright for my taste, but there is also much more detail in the shadows, and again a warmer white balance. After a basic editing, the two images look both good, and they are quite similar. In a single photo, the sky is very much under control. In a smart photo, there is a touch over exposure in the sky to the left, but it is not necessarily wrong. Actually, some people might like the dramatic effect, while the shadows are probably slightly better. So in this case, there is not a clear winner, two good images. The choice is a matter of personal taste. We also have the option to shoot these kind of images as automatic exposure bracketing. So in the menu, we choose five photos, and after merging to HDR in Lightroom, this is the result. The automatic exposure bracketing in both drones takes photos with a difference of two-thirds of a stop of exposure in each image. I found that this gap in exposure is not enough, and better result could be obtained by increasing it. So I took five single shots in rapid succession, manually changing the exposure by one stop between each shot. This is the result. Here you can see the four different versions of these images after basic editing. It's up to you to choose the winner. Let's move to a tougher one. This time the sun is right in front of us, even though behind clouds. With the drone I would normally avoid this kind of shots, as the results are generally not great. But in some cases we have no choices, so let's see what we can do. In the single image the shadows are so dark that when we try to recover them we introduce plenty of noise and chromatic aberrations. Better to get rid of this image. The smart photo is certainly much, much better considering the condition. Although the colors don't look perfectly natural and a bit of detail in the tree is lost. That is why it is a good idea to always shoot also a smart photo. And here is the one made with automatic exposure bracketing. And this one with AEB extending the exposure range between shots which gives, in my opinion, the best results, even though it is more time consuming. This time we go straight against the sun at sunrise. This is the result after basic color editing using the four different methods. Once again, it's up to you to get your pick. Let's try a few of the same image taken with the Mavic 2 Pro, in the same spots and at the same time. This single shot image looks really good to me. The sky is not overexposed and there is an excellent texture in the clouds. There is also plenty of detail in the elements in the ground, hardly any noise at all, and the colors look perfectly natural. The 20 megapixel RAW files of the Mavic 2 Pro are indeed very solid. Moving to the HDR image, the colors don't look as natural and there are some artifacts in the clouds. This is not surprising as we are dealing with a JPEG file with a much more limited color space. The image made with merged AEB photos looks also very good, and it's not easy to find major differences compared to the single row photo. 
Moving to the second image, the situation is exactly the same. The single row shot is very good and very similar to the AEB photos. While the automatic HDR JPEG file falls apart with color artifacts in the sky and lack of detail in the shadows. And again, in the image of the sunrise against the sun, the single row image captures perfectly the sun rays coming out of the cloud, while maintaining good details in the shadows. And again, the HDR JPEG image cannot render the texture of the sky properly. Due to the quality of the RAW files of the Mavic 2 Pro, there is really no reason to use the HDR mode. Also, this was an early iteration of this function, frankly quite limited, and using only JPEG files. For professional users in extreme HDR situation, it can be useful to use instead automatic exposure bracket shots, merge in HDR, maybe using Photomatics, a software with much more flexibility compared to the merge in HDR of Lightroom. But the quality of the normal RAW mode of the Mavic 2 Pro will be good enough in many situations. The HDR function of the Mavic Air 2, which is part of the smart photo mode, is a big step forward and can also produce RAW file, which makes a huge difference. It is very useful for beginner and for users who don't want to go too far with editing. For experienced users, it is still a useful function, as it can at times give better results compared to the single photo mode. In any case, I'm very impressed by the performance of the Mavic Air 2, as the images shown in this video are taken under very difficult conditions and I would not even attend these sort of photos with previous models of the Mavic line. You should now find the link on screen to my other videos about drone photography, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're interested in drones. Bye for now.